Have your druggist for Alka-Seltzer. First, fast, and always. And now, direct from the Emerald Room of the Shamrock Hotel in Houston, Texas, Alka-Seltzer brings you the quiz kids and the chief quizzer himself, Joe Kelly. <laughs> And hello, everyone. Yoo-hoo! Yes, sirree. Here we are in the largest city of the largest state in the Union, good old Houston, Texas. You know, yesterday, the big Braniff International Airways DC-6 plane, carrying the quiz kids and yours truly, zoomed down out of the sky after a wonderful flight, and we all stepped out on good old Texas soil. Believe you me, it's really great to be here. And say, speaking of things that are big... Let me give you an idea of the size of our audience here in the beautiful Emerald Room of the Shamrock Hotel. Howdy, partners! Ah! Yes, man. <laughs> yes, sirree. All of these fine Texas friends of ours have jam-packed the Emerald Room to see Quiz Kid Harvey Deitch and the little brown colt that he's to receive from rancher Monty Ritchie meet for the first time. And that very thing is going to happen. The little colt... Colt has arrived safely, and she's here waiting to meet her new young master. But, uh, folks, Harvey hasn't seen her yet. No, he hasn't even had a peek. Uh, that big moment will come later. And later on, too, we'll have the pleasure of meeting the owner of this magnificent Shamrock Hotel, Mr. Glenn McCarthy, who is our host. But right now, it's time to have fun with questions and answers, quiz kids. So let's open the Alka-Seltzer question box and get things started. Here we go with roll call. Lonnie? I'm Lonnie Lundy. I'm 15 years old, and I'm a sophomore at Main Township High School in Park Ridge, Illinois. And a quiz kid born in Texas, Mike? I'm Mike Mullen. I'm 13 years old and in the 8th grade at the University of Chicago Laboratory School. Sally Ann? I'm Sally Ann Wilhelm. I'm 12 years old. I'm in the 7th grade at Central Junior High School in Elkhart, Indiana. Joel? I'm Joel Cutterman. I'm 14 years old, and I'm in 3A at Roosevelt High School in Chicago. And Harvey? Harvey died to be eight years old. I quit it for school in grade three A. All right, fine. There's our panel for this afternoon. Now, here's your first question, kids, from Marion L. Donnell of Hartford, Connecticut. What kind of Easter hat is most appropriate for all the ladies of Texas to wear? How about that one? Lonnie? Well, the blue bonnet is the state flower. And so it It'd would be, be the blue, blue bonnet. bonnet. Right. <laughs> There you are, ladies. Now, quiz kids, your next question will be asked by our genial host here at the beautiful uh, Shamrock Hotel. And here he is, friends, Mr. Glenn McCarthy. <laughs> well, the quiz kids board is all yours, Quizzer McCarthy, so fire away. <laughs> well, quiz kids, my question pertains partially to the state of Texas. What does a cowhand mean if he says that he flushed a doggie out of a draw, flanked it, and then hogtied it? Mike? Well, uh, if he flushed the doggie out of a draw, that would mean that uh, he came on a motherless calf uh, suddenly in a place where a river used to run, but uh, now between two cliffs. And... He uh, got it out of there and turned it over on its side by grabbing uh, two legs and just flipping it over on its side. And uh, he hog-tied it. He uh, tied together three of its legs. That's partially right, but I'd like to hear Harvey's. Uh, yeah, I know he had his hand up, too. All right, Harvey. Well, I didn't, I didn't re really uh, know the first part of it, but the hog-tying it, I think means when they, when they tie its two front legs together with rope and its two back legs together with rope, too. Well, that's very true. I think that's <laughs> the question. Now, uh, before you go, Mr. McCarthy, uh, here's something uh, Harvey's been keeping for you ever since St. Patrick's Day. It's a genuine shillelagh brought over straight from Ireland, and the quiz kids got it especially for you. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. That's uh, 
Well, that's just a little token of our appreciation for your wonderful hospitality, Mr. McCarthy. Thanks again from all of us. Now, kids, uh, Betty Madison of Trenton, New Jersey, has two things she wants to ask you kids about Texas. First, she wants to ask you who have not been in Texas before, that would be Sally Ann and little Harvey, whether you were surprised by anything you saw here. In other words, in what ways is Texas different from what you expected? Sally Ann? Well, uh, when we were coming over, I didn't see one oil well, and I expected to see a lot of them. And uh, I expected to see um, more deserts and plains and instead of so much uh, fertile farmland. Oh. And I expected there to be uh, not so many big cities, but little uh, little towns. Uh huh. <laughs> I see, Harvey. Well, I expected it to be something like a big, uh, big uh, plain instead of there's a lot of vegetation on it, and we saw immense forests in it. And mm, coming again from the plain, and I thought there'd be just tiny little towns with a very lot of cattle on it. And it was about a couple of head of them. And I thought, too, too that there that, that would hardly be any vegetation, just a couple of cactus plants here and there. <laughs> I, uh, that, that's very, very good, Harvey. I, Sally, and I think the reason you didn't see any uh, oil... Uh, well, I think Mr. McCarthy carries them around in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> now then, how about the rest of you who have been here before? Uh, Miss Madison thinks that all of the people uh, in our country, uh, of all of the people in our country, the people of Texas seem to be most pleased with their state. Now, why do you think Texans are so extremely proud of their state? All right, uh, Lonnie? Well, it's... For one thing, it's the biggest state in the Union. It has a lot of distinctive features. I, I, I don't know. It seems to be just a little bit different from any of the other states. Uh -huh. <laughs> Mike? Well, that's just it. Texas is so big, it's got a great deal to be proud of. <laughs> hey. And Joe? Well, as Mike said, there is so much of it. Uh, and also, I noticed particularly the climate was uh, very good. They can be proud of that. Uh-huh. And, uh, well, uh, let's check with Sally Ann on this. Well, uh, since it is so big, it can divide itself into five different states, which I know it wouldn't do, because, because then it wouldn't be the largest one. And it also, it was the only state to come into the, four, uh, what's now the 48. Uh, when it was a separate government all of its own. It has that distinction. Fine. And Harvey? Well, too, too about about that. Uh, it has a great deal to be proud of because it's it's the only... It's the biggest state that produces cotton and, and it has the most cattle ranches, too. And to give you an idea of how big it is, it's about as big as from Chicago to New York. Well, now, <laughs> well, now uh, you know, we brought another native Texan with us from Chicago, our announcer, Franklin Ferguson. Uh, so, Frank, let's hear that good word from a good Texan about a good product. Ah, uh, you bet, Joe. You know, friends, I like to think that nearly everybody knows about Alka-Seltzer and takes it when they're uncomfortable with acid indigestion, a headache, or both. But, of course, I know full well that some of you have never tried it. So next time you're out shopping, buy a package. And the next time you have acid indigestion and the aching head that frequently accompanies it, try Alka-Seltzer. You'll be grateful for the soothing, settling effect Alka-Seltzer can give on an acid-upset stomach for the way it can relieve headache distress. Yes, as first aid to fast relief from both acid indigestion and headache, I repeat, try Alka-Seltzer then you, too, will always rely on Alka-Seltzer. First, fast, and always Alka-Seltzer. William Bear of Chicago knows the important role his own city council plays in his community's life. 
but he wants to know how did an action of the Council of Nicaea in 325 A.D. have an effect on his life this week? Sally Ann? Well, uh, the Council of Nicaea decided when the uh, date of Easter should be because for many centuries it was disputed because the Hebrew people wanted it on the Feast of the Passover and the Gentiles wanted it on the Crucifixion. And uh, it was de finally decided that Easter would be the first Sunday after the first full moon after uh, the 21st of March. That's and right. And that means that it can be from uh, March 22nd until April 25th. That's right. That's very, very good. Very good. Now, uh, Mrs. B.J. Hiles of Aurora, Illinois, receives one of those fine zines of Transoceanic Portable Radios for this question. That's uh, the Alka-Seltzer Award, friends, for every question used on our program. Of course, when the kids miss a question, the Alka-Seltzer Award is the uh, choice between a console Zenith radio phonograph combination and a Zenith television set. Now, Mrs. Hiles wants you kids to suppose that Harvey received these letters from famous horsemen of fact and fiction. Can you identify the writer of each letter and tell us the name each would be suggesting for Harvey's colt? Here's the first letter. Dear Harvey, won't you name your colt for my horse, whom I miss very much? I fell off of him one night about midnight when I was hit by a pumpkin, and I haven't seen him since. Mike? Well, uh, that would be... Uh, in the legend of Sleepy Hollow. And it would be home. And I think it was Ichabod Crane. Ichabod Crane. And, and uh, his horse was Gunpowder. Gunpowder, that's right. Nice going. Now, here's the next one. <laughs> Dear Harvey, I'd be very honored if you'd name your fine colt after my own faithful horse, which, uh, who, who carried uh, me through the battles of Antietam, Fredericksburg, and Chancellorsville. His name would be appropriate for your coat, too, seeing as you're taking him all the way from Texas to Chicago. Joe? <coughs> well, would that be Traveler, Lee's horse? That's right, Traveler, General Robert E. Lee's horse. <laughs> well, well, Harvey, my boy, the big moment has arrived. You know, folks, this all started several weeks ago when Quiz Kid Harvey Deitch received a letter from Monty Ritchie owner of the J.A. Ranch here in Texas, offering to give Harvey a beautiful little filly. And now the great day is here. Yep, we're all here and ready. Harvey, a little cold, although he hasn't seen her yet, and the rancher who is giving Harvey this wonderful gift, Mr. Monty Ritchie. Welcome to the Quiz Kids program, Mr. Ritchie. Say, now, you got a chance to talk to Harvey before we went on the air. You know, a lot of our listeners sent in suggestions to help Harvey name his little colt, and he hasn't told any of us. Uh, did he tell you the name he's decided on? I'm not saying, Joe. Oh, I just bet he did. Now, you wouldn't just whisper it to me, would you? Little Harvey's a friend of mine, Joe. Oh, hmm. Well, I guess that settles that. I uh, I know you must have told Harvey something about the colt you're going to give him and uh, your ranch where she was born. It's uh, all right if I ask him a few questions, is it? Yes, if Harvey says so. Oh, well, Harvey, how about it? Where is the J.A. Ranch? Uh, tell us something about it. Well, the J.A. Ranch is up in the panhandle of Texas where the big plains, plains in country uh, are. It is the, one of the only ranches there that that has uh, shuck wagons on it, which the cowboys follow for for days and months. It, it the the two the, the the ranch there is strictly a working ranch, not a dude ranch. Oh. <laughs> Their horses are trained for working. Oh, fine. Well, that's that's a good boy. Now, what about the little filly uh, uh, Mr. Ritchie has told you about her, hasn't he? Oh, yes. Oh? I don't know what he meant when he said this. What's but, that? But he said that my horse was, was, wasn't a web-footed horse. He said it came from the Upper Plains. Oh? The country. Uh. So, he said, too, that it was a quarter horse. 
and they're they're known for their, their quick burst of speed and their and their stop and they stop very fast. It can outrun almost any other horse in a half a mile. No. And it is extreme it has extremely a lot of stanimum. <laughs> <laughs> What, what, what a mum did you say it had? Stamina. Oh, stamina. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So you, stamina, you mean, don't you? Yeah. All right. Fine. Well. <laughs> well, that's really something. Now, uh, and, uh, was there anything that you didn't tell Harvey, uh, Mr. Ritchie? Uh, yes. Yes, there is something I didn't tell him. That uh, this little filly of yours is out of our stud we call King George. And we bought King George from the King Ranch here in Texas. And the president and secretary of the American Quad Horse Association were with us on the ranch when we chose this colt. And they were delighted with her and said that her confirmation was such that with proper care that you might take her and show her at the uh, international show at, at Chicago this fall. It would be quite something to figure on, wouldn't it? Well, I should say so. You betcha. Well... Now, I, I guess that brings us up to date on uh, about everything. Uh, Harvey, what do you say? Let's have a look at your little colt, huh? And then you can give her her new name. Now, you come along with me and Mr. Ritchie, and uh, we'll just step down here off the stage and go over here to this uh, dandy trailer. You see, folks, uh, Mr. Ritchie uh, had the uh, uh, trailer driven uh, from, uh, well, to Houston. It's uh, one of those uh, new Miley trailers made in Fort Worth. Had it driven from the J.A. Ranch by P.C. Hicks. Now, we'll just open the uh, door here. After all, it's all enclosed. And then you'll get your first glimpse of your new little friend. Well, let's open the door here and, and take a peek. Ah, there she is, Harvey. Say, isn't she a wonder? Oh, yes. Yeah. She's, she's wonderful. She's even more wonderful than I expected her to be. You say she's more, even more wonderful than you expected her to be. Well, that's fine. Well, uh, and, and did you notice she took some, um, took some uh, sugar from Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Gray here, right. huh? uh, Mr. Ray? All right, fine. Well, uh, Harvey, uh, why don't you, uh, you want to scratch her nose or pat her? Go ahead and scratch her nose, Harvey. Pat her head. See how silky she is. Maybe she'll put her head in your shoulder and tell you something. She saying anything? No. No, nothing. All right. She will later on. Well, Harvey, ask her to say something. Say something. <laughs> yeah, that's right. She's trying to, get, to. Try to give Harvey a big kiss. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. Well, now, Harvey, <laughs> she's all yours, and all of our friends from coast to coast are waiting to hear the name you've picked out for her, and I think it's about time you told this little colt what her name is going to be. So? Your name is going to be Dynamount. Dynamount, did you say? Mm -hmm. Well, what do you know about that? That's really a descriptive name, isn't it? Uh, tell me, Harvey, who sent in the winning name of Dynamount? It was sent in by C. E. Curley, Box 118, Peck, Kansas. Well, what do you know about that? Well, congratulations, Mr. Curley, Mr. C. E. Curley, Box 118 of Peck, Kansas. That's a wonderful name, Dynamount. And the makers of Alka-Seltzer give you your choice, Mr. Curley, between the large Zenith radio phonograph and the Zenith uh, television set for sending in that winning name. Say, Harvey, now you can't possibly write uh, thank you notes to all the people who sent in the name suggestions. Let's see. I think there were uh, something like 127,500 of them. So uh, why don't you just say uh, thank you right now, Harvey? Thank you for all the wonderful letters you sent in, and and and, and I, w I wish I could name my horse 127,000 of them, 500 of of names. But I'm sorry, I can't. So thank you a very lot. Oh well, that's a good boy. That was fine, Harvey. Say, this has really been exciting, hasn't it? Uh, and Mr. Ritchie, it's been wonderful meeting you. And thanks again from all of us. And now then, Texans, how about a big hand for a fine fellow Texan, Mr. Ritchie? (laughs) 
Now, uh, maybe you folks are wondering how the little coal is going to get up to Chicago. Well, everything's arranged. She's going to fly back to Chicago in a Braniff freight cargo plane. And her new master, little Harvey, will meet her at the airport in Chicago. Well, I think we better get back to some questions, kids. And, Harvey, I'm not going to expect too much of you because I know your mind's going to be on your little colt. Uh, Dynamount. Oh, say, that's a dandy name. Let's see what our next question is here. Here's one from Marion Anderson of Denver, Colorado. She says that uh, many cowboys are sharpshooters. And she wonders if you can identify this sharpshooter in nature. What type of fish might be called a sharpshooter? Mike? Well, that would be an archer fish, which uh, lives in uh, calm saltwater pools. And uh, it takes water into its mouth and squirts it at some insect, either flying over the water or sitting on a leaf. And uh, it's accurate up to about three feet. Well, fine. That's a very, very good answer. That's the correct one, too. Now then, uh, you know, folks, we were all happy to welcome spring last week, but I'll just bet the old weatherman will still have plenty of tricks up his sleeve. Yes, if the spring season runs true to form, we can count on changeable weather, and that means cold-catching weather. And what advice do you, uh, we have for the folks about coals, Franklin? Well, we hope that they'll all be sensible. Really take care, Joe. But friends, if you do take cold, take Alka-Seltzer. Yes, remember that Alka-Seltzer can give comforting, welcome relief from the misery of a cold. Take it first thing for fast relief from the ache all over feverish misery of a cold. Always keep Alka-Seltzer handy so you'll be ready to help yourself to the relief it can give if you catch a cold. And do take care of yourself. Get plenty of rest, stay out of drafts, eat wisely, and dress sensibly. And here's another thing that can help you. If your cold causes a sore throat, dissolve two Alka-Seltzer tablets in a quarter glass of warm water and gargle for the soothing comfort it can give. You'll like Alka-Seltzer, you'll like its pleasant, refreshing taste, and you'll certainly like the relief it can give from the misery of a cold. Get Alka-Seltzer at any drugstore. All right, kids, Mrs. Mabel Graham of Nashua, Iowa, points out that several of our favorite hymns are based on passages from the Bible that relate to events of Easter week. I'll give you a passage from the Bible, and you are to sing a part of the hymn, if you know it. Now, here, on the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna! Blessed is the King of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. Lonnie? Well, that's uh, The Palms by Jean Baptiste Corey. All Corre. right. Can you sing part oh, of it? Oh, that goes like this. All right, Lonnie. Now, how about this one? And he saith unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. Mike? That might be Jesus Christ is risen today. Well, now, uh, can you sing part of that for us? Jesus Christ is risen today. And uh, here's uh, another question. Mrs. William J. Street of Buffalo, New York, wants you kids to suppose that when you get back home to Chicago, you find that someone called at your house and left a note uh, signing his name, Silviligus Floridanus. Who was your visitor? Mike? Well, that would be the Easter Bunny, because uh, Silviligus Floridanus is the scientific name for the cottontail rabbit. That's right, that's the boy. <laughs> and now then, to uh, close our Easter program, I've asked Sally Ann and Lonnie to tell us about that very first Easter. Lonnie with music at the organ, 
And Sally Ann with the biblical story of the resurrection. All right, kids. As it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat upon it. And the angel said unto the women, Fear ye not, for I know that ye seek Jesus which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. Later Jesus came and spake to his disciples, saying, Be not afraid. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. That was truly beautiful. Thank you, Sally Ann and Lonnie. Folks, you know, friendship is the motto for Texas, and all of us can testify that the folks down here really live up to it. Our Quiz Kids broadcast from the magnificent Emerald Room of the Shamrock Hotel has been an experience that we'll never forget. And we want to thank our host, Mr. Glenn McCarthy, and his entire staff for their Wonderful hospitality. Also, the staff of the NBC affiliate station here in Houston, Texas, KPRC, and its manager, Jack Harris, for their fine cooperation, and all of our Texas friends for making this such a memorable occasion. And now then, here's an important word for all you boys and girls who entered this year's Quiz Kids Best Teacher Contest. The Quiz Kids radio program is going off the air temporarily. Now, we'll be back on the air in May over NBC, so watch your newspapers for our new airtime. If our Best Teacher Contest winners are announced before then, you will be notified in the following ways, by mail and through your local NBC radio station, and then contest winners will be announced in newspapers and on the Quiz Kids Weekly NBC television program. Incidentally, I hope uh, all you folks who have television sets are already regular Quiz Kids viewers, but in case you haven't found us yet, check the TV listing in your local newspaper, won't you? And now, it's time to say Happy Easter, everybody, and goodbye, kids. Goodbye, Mr. Kelly. Goodbye, Texas! Mother's one-a-day brand multiple vitamins taken every day give complete protection against the let-down, all-in, pepless feeling that results from a lack of any or all of the known essential vitamins. Health surveys indicate that millions of school children show definite signs of vitamin deficiency disease. Protect your family. Don't let lack of vitamins interfere with the normal growth, energy, and progress of your children. Remember, one-a-day brand multiple vitamins protect Remember the name and the package. Blue with a big one. Be sure to see and hear Alka Seltzer's Quiz Kids television show every week on NBC. Consult your local newspaper for time and station. This is Franklin Ferguson speaking. Tonight, here Phil and Alice, and later, it's Texas Rangers on NBC.